It all starts with a box. Now the concepts I'm about to show you are some of the most important concepts to understand in Revit. So let's load this box into our project. So here we have this box, let's click. Let's click our box and we'll array it. We're gonna make 10 of these boxes. So let's put 10 in here and we'll make it to about right there, hit escape. Now let's open up a 3D view so we can see what these look like. Let's move our 3D view to the side, we'll zoom all. And now we have our little boxes. Now these boxes are actually plumbing fixtures. I'm gonna select one of the boxes and you can see over here it says it's a plumbing fixture and that's the category. So with plumbing fixtures, we need to provide a connector so we can connect our pipe into them. So let's go back to our view one and let's add a connector to this face right here. We'll go to create pipe connector and we'll just click this face right here. Hit escape, we'll select our connector We'll change the diameter to one inch and we'll set the flow configuration to preset. Put the system on domestic cold water. And for this example, we'll just use one GPM. We'll hit apply. Now we'll load it back into our project. We'll overwrite the existing version. And as you can see, nothing has really happened, but when we click on our box, you can see there's now a pipe connector. So I'll click into my floor plan. And when we start to draw the pipe, you can see it will automatically change it that blue color because it's now on our domestic cold water system right here. So let's undo that and I'm gonna take it a little further. So we have these plumbing fixtures and anytime you have a group of plumbing fixtures you can select all of them and create a piping system. So let's click this piping button. We'll click OK. And now we have a piping system that's been created. And with a piping system, what we can do is we can generate a layout. So let's click that button. And here is a layout that Revit is automatically routing all the piping for us. We can change all the settings up here, but for this, I'm just gonna finish the layout. And we'll change our view to fine. And you can see that we're using a one inch piece of pipe into our box where it's connecting to our little connectors. So this looks good, so let's go ahead and maybe tag this floor plan so we can get a sense of how many GPM are flowing through our pipes. But first, I'm just gonna click this little elbow, click the plus, and let's just draw some more pipe down this way, right here. Now I wanna tag all of these pieces right here. So I'm gonna select them and go to annotate, and we're gonna tag all. And I'm gonna use this pipe tag that I've created, click OK. And as you can see, the pipe tag has the diameter and the GPM. So each one is one GPM. And when they come down here, you can see 10 GPM is entering our system. So let's continue to take this concept further. So in this example, I have a 10 story building. So what I wanna do is I want to select all of my pieces of pipe. I'm gonna go ahead and group them together and you'll see why later. And we'll just name it group one. And I'm gonna zoom out for you guys. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that group. I'm gonna copy it to the clipboard and I'm gonna paste it aligned to selected levels. And we're gonna paste it to all the levels above, which are levels two through 10. We'll click okay. And now you can see Revit has pasted our group to each level. Now the beautiful part about that is if the architect or the owner decides that they wanna make changes, we can make changes to all the groups on all the levels. So for instance, Let's go ahead and remove this fixture right here. So I'm gonna double click into my group and I'm just gonna delete it. So we'll just delete this piece right here and we'll hit the minus button right here and we'll hit finish. And now that we only have nine fixtures at one GPM each, we only have nine GPM going into our little piping network system. And you can see up here that that fixture has been removed in each group on each level. So that's very helpful. Now we might, might also want to create a, different fixtures and different heights. For instance, let's say this fixture was an ADA unit or ADA fixture, which needs to be at a height of 17 inches. So what I've gone ahead and done is if we go back into our family editor, if you look at the front view of our family, I've created this height parameter. And what the height parameter allows me do, to do is change the height of this fixture so I can set it to anything I want. So let's undo that. And let's just go ahead and click back into our project. And I'm gonna adjust the heights of this fixture right here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create different types of fixtures. So all of these right here, I want to be the standard fixture. So I'm gonna go to edit type. And right now they say it's a box, but I'm just gonna rename that and we'll make it WC1. We'll click okay, we'll click okay. 
And for this fixture right here, I'm gonna edit the type and I'm gonna make that WC2. So I'm gonna double duplicate this and we'll name this WC2. Hit okay, we'll click okay. And we'll finish that off. And now what I can do is I can tab into this fixture in my 3D view and I can go to edit type. And what I'll do is I'll use that height parameter that I created and we'll make this 17 inches because that's the minimum height for an ADA fixture. And we'll click OK. And Revit is going to break this piece of piping because it needs to raise it up. So let's actually cancel that. And before we do that, let's just delete these pieces of piping. And then we'll click Finish. And now we'll tab back into our fixture. We'll edit the type. And we'll make this 17 inches. We'll click OK. And now you can see it brought that fixture up to 17 inches. And it did that on every single level. Okay, so now we have to connect this piping back into it. So let's just click on into our group. We'll create this pipe right here. We'll go to our floor plan. We'll double click into that and we'll just trim these together. Hit finish. And now you can see those are all connected on each floor plan. Now I might want to add that tag back so I can just right click create similar and we'll just add that tag back right there. And you can see, I'll see I have nine GPM. So maybe we want to then re-add that fixture that we lost before because they need it for some reason. So let's just double click onto our group and let's select our fixture and piping. We'll copy it and we'll just copy it to this location. We'll use our trim command and we'll trim that together. And now you can see we're back to 10 GPM. I'll just tag this right here. So I'm making edits on the fly and I'm revising things instantly. The creators of Revit made this program so we could continue to revise our project instantly. And so that's what I'm trying to show in this video right here. So let's take things a step further and let's go ahead and connect all of these networks of piping and let's make a water riser diagram. So I'm just gonna zoom into my first floor. We'll just tab into this piece of pipe right here. I'll just create similar and we'll create a piece of pipe just like this and we'll bring it up to about 100 feet. We'll click apply and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this back and we'll use the same technique we did before. We'll select that piece of pipe. We'll go into our floor plan view. We'll copy it to the clipboard and paste it aligned to the selected levels above. So we'll select all the levels above. And now I have those pieces of piping and we can trim these together right here. And since this is a group, we have to use a certain technique where we have a coupling here. So we're going to go ahead and pull this in. And since it's a group, it's going to create that coupling. But that allows me to still bring my flow through that group into my riser. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these really quick and I'm going to speed up the video. So now we have all of our pipes connected to our group. So now we need to connect all of our mains to our riser. So I'm just going to use the right view just like that. And we'll use the trim extend multiple command. So we'll go to modify trim extend multiple. And I'll just click on this one and click these. And I'll just speed the video up for you guys. And for the last one, we'll just bring it down a little bit more. We'll trim those into that. And now I'm just going to rotate around and maybe I like that view right there. And we'll just bring this out a little further. So now essentially I've created this nice isometric riser diagram. And let's say I wanna tag all of my plumbing fixtures. So we can easily do that. We can just go to annotate, tag all. And I have to lock the view first. So let's do that. Let's go to this house, save orientation and lock view. And let's call it the cold water riser. Hit okay. Now I'll go to tag all. We'll tag all of the plumbing fixtures, click OK. And you'll see these question marks. And the reason why is because I haven't updated the type mark for these fixtures, but it's easy to do. I can just click into the question mark and we'll name this one WC2 for the ADA fixture. We'll hit yes. And that tag gets updated everywhere. And then we'll update this tag or this type mark and we'll make that WC-1. Now I can also do that at the family level. So if I go into the box, I can go to edit type here and I can update the type mark right here. So we'll make that WC1 and it will update them all. Now if I want to move these tags, I can right click, select all instances visible in the view, and then I can use my arrow keys to kind of nudge them over and I can hold shift and make a bigger move, maybe something like that. And I can also change the scale so things look a little nicer. 
So let's use 3 16 and that looks really good. So the last thing I might want to do is I might want to tag all of my pieces of pipe. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just select the pieces we want to tag. Those look good. And we'll just click the filter button and we don't need to tag the pipe fittings. And we'll just go up to annotate, tag all. We'll only use the selected objects that we have. We we'll use that pipe tag we had before. And again, we are tracking the GPM and the pipe size as we go down to the bottom of our building, which is now 100 GPM. So as you guys know that a water closet is not one GPM. So what we need to do is we need to update our pipe connector. So let's go back into our family. Let's click on our pipe connector and let's update that to instead of preset, we'll use fixture units. And for a water closet, we need 10 fixture units per water closet. Click OK and we'll load it back into our project. We'll overwrite the existing version. And now you can see all of the GPMs have updated using the fixture units to calculate the GPM. Now the last thing I might want to do is I might want to size my piping. And so I'm just going to select all the piping right here. Now we can't size this piece of piping because it's inside a group. So maybe we would want to ungroup all of these. So if you want to select all the groups, we can just select one, right click, and select all the instances visible in this view. And that will select all the groups. And only the groups are selected. And you can see right here, they're called model group one. So to ungroup them, let's just go up to ungroup. And now they're ungrouped. And let's go ahead and size all of our piping. So we'll tab into all of the pieces or network of piping. We need to deselect all of our plumbing fixtures. So we'll go to filter and deselect the plumbing fixtures. We'll click OK. And now that we only have the piping selected, we can use our duct pipe sizing tool. We can set the velocity to a max of whatever we want. I'm going to use eight feet per second for this. And I will go ahead and match the connector size. We'll click OK. And as we zoom into our cold water riser, you can see that the pipe sizes have been automatically sized for us based on the velocity that we set and based on our fixture unit value. And you can see there is 208 GPM that is needed for our piping network. So essentially, we've created this entire plumbing system for our building from this simple box. Now, if you like this concept, I go into this concept in much more detail in my course, Plumbing 101, that's available at mepguy.com, and we create an entire plumbing system from just a box. And if you want to learn more about creating plumbing fixtures, make sure to check out the next video.